time to get rid of some plastic. What are you looking for, babe? Uh, our lighting circuit. Why? Junction boxes because we've got absolutely zero lights on the starboard side and partial lights on the port side after the trip here. So, so those orange cables. Mm. Oh, hello. <laughs> What's that up there? Oh, you know what? That's where they'd be. Like, actually, there's a lot of cables that go straight up into here. Next panel we pull off is going to be behind the TV yeah. and see what we can find. This will be where it's at, Pete. Yeah. For sure. Hey guys, so we're in day four. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Dust in the throat. Day four of moving on board uh, the new Let's Dance. It's still a bit of a construction zone, as you can see behind me. Maria and I have been hard at it for the last couple of days, just moving on board and tidying up. And today, I believe, is bilge day. Hello. Hi. <laughs> oh. oh, God, let me get out. I can't believe how deep these bilges are compared to our Lucia. Mm. On the Lucia, we could just kneel down and just reach in there and you could get all the way to the edges of them these ones go right in like another half a meter that way yeah and it, oh it's crazy but anyway this is bilge tuesday and when bilge tuesday is over we're gonna have the cleanest bilges in the marina they weren't too bad but now they're absolutely sparkling look yes. at that and believe it or not when she comes off the factory floor there's fiberglass dust in there and no. Cable ties. I've pulled out screws and bits of building material. Bits of conductor, yeah. that sort of stuff. So we generally get in there and give it a really good tidy up. As you can see, we still haven't quite finished unpacking, but yeah. that's for another day. Yeah. We won't reveal any more of the boat just yet because it's still quite untidy. When we're finished with all this lot, we'll give you the green tour. Hey guys. For those of you who have been following our journey, you'll realise that just recently we've moved from the Lucia 40 to a Elba 45, and today we want to introduce you to the new Let's Dance. Yep, this is the big beast right here behind us. Come and have a look on board. We'll run you through what we've found the differences is between the Lucia and the Elba. We're probably in a unique position because we've actually owned two new catamarans that are different sizes, so we can probably comment a little bit about what that translates to. Let's go. All right, this is her. She's a big girl. It is noticeable how much wider this boat is than the Lucia 40, and particularly when we're manoeuvring her. Welcome aboard the new Let's Dance, Elba 45. She's looking very homely at the moment because we're in winter mode. Obviously we'll pack a lot of this stuff up when we sail off in two weeks time, but we kind of had two separate lives on here. We have a winter life where we get all homey and bunkered down in a community, and then we have summer life where this becomes more like a boat and less like a home. So come and have a look at the winter version. The main difference for me between this one and the Lucia is just the, the actual space. You don't have a bigger table, it's the same size table, but the cockpit itself is just the corridors are wider. The space in this saloon and galley area is just fantastic. This really is like a small apartment. So where do you want to go first, babe? Let's do inside. We're hoping to share our insights into the difference between the 40 and the 45 and whether we really needed to go up into this model. Yeah. So, And it's a tricky one. And a lot of people have asked us, why on earth did you sell that beautiful boat? And she was beautiful. She was the love of our life. And go into this bigger boat. And we still ask ourselves the question, did we need a bigger boat? Yeah. One of my first observations about this particular boat is just how many cushions there are. <laughs> and when you're cleaning this boat and you've got to pull all these cushions out and put them inside downstairs, it's just ridiculous. For me, 
insane number of cushions, but you know, that's what you get when you buy a bigger boat, I suppose. It was only just yesterday that we put all the cushions out. We pulled them out of the forward cabin. Seriously, it took me 30 minutes <laughs> to put these cushions out, work out where they go, and they're still... There's still a pile of them down in the bedroom put... waiting to go on the front deck. Yeah. So we haven't put the front deck cushions on yet because Michael gave up after half an hour. He said, that's it, I've had enough. So we just want to share with you some of the major options that we took, some of the major options that we didn't take. And some of the things that we've changed along the way just to make the boat more customised to us. So come and have a look. Whilst we've got too many cushions outside, you can never have enough bench space inside. And this galley works so well. It was quite controversial when FP released the design of this with this gap in between that goes downstairs into the hull. And a lot of people said, oh, that's dangerous, or how does that work in a kitchen setting? Uh, look, it works. You can cook up a storm in here. One of the things that we particularly didn't like was these boats all come with a garbage bin. That? A garbage bin receptacle. Yep. We've actually changed this. That's yeah. actually a marble insert that we've yeah. put in there. So normally there's a raised lid here and you open it, you put your garbage in there and you have a garbage bag down here. We prefer to keep our garbage outside under the stairs there. So we filled that in with marble. And we thought it would be really, really hard to match colour, so we went for a contrast. And here we go. He's a real artist. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Shock yourself, Mimit. And at the same time, we filled in this little groove that was at the back of the bench, and we've done that with the exact same stone. Yeah, we still don't know what this groove was for, whether it was a design feature, but all we found was that it just collected dirt and, and it was a pain in the neck. We got sick of wiping it out. Here's the moment of truth. Mehmet knows what he's doing. He's a craftsman. Wow. Good job. And he's very particular about this. Kutu. Kutu. Uh, I think he's saying, don't touch the workmanship. No. Yeah, he was trying to tell us what's going to happen next and something's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, but we don't know we what it is. <laughs> so we're just nodding and saying yes, okay. Uh, the other thing that we particularly didn't like on this boat was the open shelving up here in the kitchen. The purpose is meant to be to stand all your bottles of olive oil and vinegar or whatever you want in these open shelves. We don't like clutter and mess, so we had to get rid of that. So we put these on, and we absolutely love them. Shock yourself. This is Mehmet, who's doing all the work. It's very good, yeah. And at the same time, we built a little hidey hole up here on top of the oven. We always felt that the oven area looked a bit unfinished up here at the top. So we asked him to make a cupboard also for up there. And that's what's going in now. A small. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> this drawer here originally came set up as a knives and forks drawer. We've changed that to a spice drawer and we've moved the knives and forks over to here. We've got a freezer. It's an absolute necessity for us. Identical to the Lucia. Yep. Two fridges, 130 litre capacity approximately. Which are slightly bigger than yeah. the Lucia. And inside the cupboards we've added some racks just for additional storage. Just to make use of space that would otherwise be wasted. We opted for the coffee table in the saloon lounge area. Uh, a lot of people like the dining room table in there, but Marita and I do most of our dining outside uh, in the cockpit. And we just like the look of the coffee table there. It's great storage for yeah. glasses. Still got a little bit of work to do down in there, otherwise yeah. we're gonna have glass everywhere. So that's something we need to do in the next fortnight, babe, before we take One of our favorite rooms though, this really is a spacious oh. room. In winter, it's been really, really cosy with oh, the air cons on, yeah. pumping out the warm air. It's just been beautiful. And that opening window there that we've got open today just sends a beautiful breeze through the whole place. And of course, you can open this boat right up. The windows here in the galley go all the way back. The doors go all the way back. On the Lucia, 
you could open the first window but not the second one. So it's a very kind of seamless indoor outdoor space now. It's a big difference that this boat opens right up. The saloon slash cockpit area feel really big. And obviously, because it's a bigger boat, you get more of these floor storage areas and they're deeper. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Everyone be pleased to know that we've still got the naughty cupboard right down here in the corner. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, great storage under this sofa here too, by the way. That's just fantastic. For, that's going to become our safety cupboard where we keep all of our life jackets and anything we need to grab quickly, plus a fire extinguisher and stuff. Storage cupboards underneath those two cushions there as well. Let's head down to the owner's side. Significant difference down here in comparison to the Lucia. It's a lot wider and it's a lot higher. Yeah, a lot of storage, pretty much everywhere there's storage. I find that a lot of the storage on this boat is not deep storage, it's actually quite shallow storage. In the Lucia, there wasn't as much storage, but the spaces were bigger and deeper. Overall space. though, there's yeah. more than enough storage for us. Yeah. One of the things that I really do need to mention though that I think they've missed the mark on for owners, not so much for charters, there is no full length hanging space in the owner's side of this boat. I, I just think it's an important point for FP to <laughs> maybe think about. All right, the bathroom. Separate head. Nice long shower. Oh, scoot on. This side of the boat, we haven't done a whole lot with. We're using this forward cabin as a storage area at the moment. It's commonly known uh, as the junk room. Yeah, separate shower and head for the forward cabin. Yeah. Come and see my laundry. Oh, yeah, it's a bit tight. It is a bit tight. Um, I actually used to like the laundry arrangement on the Lucia. Here it is a bit tight to, to get your laundry basket in and out, but we just got the factory washing machine. It's a five kilo Bosch. Works well enough. It does work well enough, yeah. This aft cabin we've sort of finished off. Shower and the head there, and of course, both these units are bigger than the setup in the Lucia. Yeah. Something I really wanted to address on this boat because it bugged me on the Lucia, the curtains, when they come on these boats, have got a split in them. So one of the first things I did was Velcro those splits together so that the whole curtain is all in one go and it doesn't come apart. So that's, it's a little thing, but they're the little things that make the boat more livable. I've been taking up our time for the last three months. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Heading outside now to Michael's domain, the cockpit tent. So we had this made in Turkey. Originally, we were going to get the factory one in France but we're much happier with this custom made one that we've had done here. It works really well and it's lovely. Um, we would say that if you're gonna live aboard all year round, a cockpit tent is essential for winter because you can close up the area, you can warm it up. Well, we've moved aboard and we've got a lot of jobs to do, but probably the most important thing on our list at the moment is to get a cockpit tent made for this boat especially since it's actually winter at the moment, although you wouldn't know it, I've got a uh, t-shirt on. It's been really warm here for some unknown reason, but uh, it will get cold. There's some cold weather coming next week, so we're gonna need an enclosure here. We're getting a winter tent made, and we're also getting summer shades made, so we'll show you the process. Yeah, just one of the many jobs that we decided to get done here in Turkey rather than France, because the quality of workmanship here is fantastic. Anything that needs customising, which this really does, they do great work. It's going to be Sunbrilla fabric. It's just perfecting the fit of this template, just making a slight adjustment. It's like watching a tailor make a suit. The boys are measuring up at the moment and trying to work out how they're going to deal with our up and down roof line and we'll go from there. One week later and here's the finished product, our cockpit tent and our sunshades. Looking good. Just from first viewing, we're very happy with it. 
it's 11 minutes past seven and the boys have just finished putting on our winter tent and they've just asked me if I would like a cover for our barbecue. So they're measuring it up right now and cutting a template. Doing a fantastic job, boys. We also had summer shades made. They've got ventilation in them and they keep the sun out but allow the air to circulate. Right, yeah. let's go upstairs, have a look at the dance floor. It's the helm's a helm, we won't talk through that. This is not a traditional walkthrough, it's more about what we're doing to this boat to make it a liveaboard. I'm glad you moved to the boom because I have bumped my head on that once. Everyone's aware of this upper lounge area on the Elba, but what I really want to talk about whilst we're up here is the addition of our solar up the top. This boat comes out standard with 400 watts of solar panels and for us simply that's just not enough so we didn't take that option we wanted three by 400 watt panels but here in turkey we couldn't get them we ended up getting three 360 so we've got just over a thousand watts of solar panel there and we've teamed that with individual smart controllers and we've upsized our 2000 va inverter to a quattro 5000 va so we can run more appliances downstairs. Well, this is it. The planning's over, and today's the day that the solar installation's going in. We're a little bit language challenged with this team of guys. They don't speak any English at all. We do speak a tiny bit of Turkish, but not the kind of words we need for this job, so we're going to see how it's going anyway. We just lost our power. <laughs> These guys are absolute craftsmen. They're quite happy to custom make anything here in Turkey and they're really good at it. What do you two think about this whole thing? Oh, we're supervising. Just... <laughs> <laughs> we're just talking about the marvel of the, the workmanship that these guys can crack out on top of the boat. They measured once, cut eight legs, and now we're tacking them on all in the space of 10 minutes. Even the guy that's measuring isn't the guy that's cutting. <laughs> They've got that good a relationship that he just knows how much to grind off <laughs> on the dock by eye. The goggles. There you go. He's just, <laughs> he's just done again. He's just marked it up. He said, no, no, it still needs another thousandth of an inch, mate. <laughs> All in Turkish, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but we, like, we understand. Yeah. yeah. We've been tradies. Yeah. These boys don't get out of bed before a go, but when they do, they crack on. Welding screen. My solar board's coming together. And it's looking pretty sexy if I do say so myself. Bit of a cable loom there, now you see them. Now you don't. That's going to be the finished product. This is my workshop. Marita's moved on in and... We... I'm keeping you company. Ah, oh, whilst you're preparing for dinner. And you reckon yours looks pretty? Come see my mango salsa. Oh. Oh yeah. That's pretty. That's, that's going to go with the chicken curry tonight. That does look good, but my solar boards... I've no. just got it picked at the post. never nice when you start drilling holes in your boat but these guys seem to know what they're doing so here we have it the finished product of my solar panel board what we've got here is three MPPT 130 smart controllers they feed down into a negative and positive bus which will feed into this circuit breaker and off to my battery bank. On the right here, that's a DC isolator, so I can actually isolate the solar panels from the roof if I ever need to work on them or do any work on the board. And this box here, it's a communications box. Out of each of these controllers runs a VE direct cable down into a four port USB hub 
which is fed from an AC power supply in here. From here, I run a USB to USB cable all the way back to my nav station. So I get all of the information coming from my solar back at my Victron color controller. I better get into it, get it down into the hole because tomorrow the plan is to put on our panels and fire this puppy up. So that's the final panel screwed in. One more bolt, we're done. Ooh, look at this. Nice, eh? Yeah. We've had this boat out just a couple of times already on anchor and overnight we dropped down to a state of charge of around about 84% and within a couple of hours of getting up in the morning using the electric kettle and the toaster we're fully charged by uh, 11, 11.30 at, at the latest in the middle of summer that'll be even quicker. We've been out for two sailing expeditions on this boat and tried out the systems. It was quite scary, wasn't it, pulling out of here in this big fat boat to start with? Our berth is very small. Yeah, if you have a look at the space that we've got on our <laughs> nose there and the space at our rear, but the engines are further apart and she manoeuvres really well. I think it's only a matter of a couple of months and we'll be just as comfortable manoeuvring this boat in tight spaces as we were the Lucia. You've done an amazing job of adjusting to manoeuvring it in this tiny space here. I was a little bit nervous when we first went out into the bay last week to do the tie back procedure that you do here in Turkey where you might be anchoring in 20 metres of water and then you've got to swim to shore and tie the lines back. We had a 12 knot breeze that was coming slightly on our beam. I was on the boat at the helm holding it in position while Michael was tying back and it's always a little bit tricky but I, I feel confident now just even after that one experience just because you know once you get the feel for it it actually doesn't feel that much different to the 40 foot boat. On the Lucia being a smaller boat you could throw it around that just that little bit quicker or I could put that boat anywhere. At this particular point in time I need to think about manoeuvring this boat a little bit more than I had to think about the Lucia. But you know, we sailed on the Lucia for three years, so it was, it was like my right arm. But hopefully, we'll become that familiar with this boat, and I'll be saying exactly the same thing about this boat in a couple of months' time. Wow, it's nice up here, isn't it? Wow, oh, it's just beautiful. Let's talk about the barbecue just very quickly. So the plancher, which is the flat grill that is one of the options on this boat, is a bit controversial. Some people say that it doesn't work terribly well, especially on windy conditions. We decided this time just to go for your standard Weber, this is the Weber 2200Q, and we found so far it works really well. We've been actually surprised because we loved the Sovereign barbecue on our previous boat, the stainless steel one, that was about, <laughs> six times more expensive than this but this one is going well one of the reasons we went for this is because we wanted this barbecue to be completely portable because quite often we'll go ashore and have a barbecue with neighboring boats so we've just strapped that down to that box there we can throw it in the tender off to shore have a barbecue on the beach and bring it back all we had to do was pipe in the gas which was the gas came all the way here we had to put a little box in there and I think it looks great. Yeah, and that's something else that we've changed on this boat. We've put in a big gas cylinder. Oh yeah, yeah, we've upsized our gas, which probably only be good for here in Turkey. We'll probably have to get rid of that when we sail out of here. But so far we've been sitting on one gas bottle since we've been on board and it's been fantastic. Yeah, we've had months and months Maybe on the same gas true. bottle. Oh, that's a bit dirty. <laughs> That's from that horrible dust storm we had recently. It was shocking. Oh, Whoops! Really? Who missed that bit? <laughs> We've just had this Sahara dust storm and the boat is filthy. Oh God, look at this. All over our clean boat. Oh, and Michael's new solar panels. Oh. These boats come with a twin 50 horsepower. We upsize to the twin 60 and their turbocharge. But the big thing that we've changed down here is that big bad boy down there. That's the Quattro 5000 VA inverter. So our battery bank, we went for the option 
of an extra battery so we've got 750 ampere hours of storage we could possibly even go up to a thousand particularly with the quattro also built this little wall here just for heat reflection coming off the motor mainly the alternator there oh yeah whilst I'm down here I installed a shunt down there for the BMV 712 Victron that feeds our battery monitor yep. which in turn feeds the colour controller and three individual Victron controllers your mate Peter was really fantastic in helping you do that wasn't he yeah he was just brilliant we definitely wouldn't have got the same result that we have without Pete's input mate. thanks Pete <laughs> here we are out the front we'll just have a quick look in the anchor lockers we've got two of them this time instead of one what have we got down here darling uh water maker we chose to stay with a 12 volt water maker because we like to make water under sail you can't do that unless you're running your generator if you go for a 240 so we went for the 105 litre per hour water maker we also went for the generator we're not expecting that we'll have to use that a lot but we personally think it's nice just to have it as a redundancy. That's a 9 kVA generator and look to be honest the amount of solar that we've got on board is about the minimum you could get away with as a liverboard. It will serve us really well in the middle of summer here in the Med but I'm sure there'll be other parts of the world where that generator will get a good workout. Over here in the anchor bay we stuck with the standard 12 mil chain. We upgraded our anchor to a spade and the couple of times that we've had her under hook so far she's held really really well we added extra chain i'm not 100 percent sure how much chain these boats come with anymore but over here in the eastern med you have to have at least 80 meters and i reckon you know somewhere between 80 and 100 meters of chain is good value well we also added those pre-filters there for town water coming onto the boat. Obviously in summer our tank only has yeah. water maker water in it but during winter we don't run the water maker because we're in the marina and it's just not a great place to be running your water makers. That's when we fill up with town water and it's nice to have that filtration there because the town water can be a bit hit and miss. Water tanks there she holds 700 litres of water and 470 litres of fuel. Yeah parasailer we haven't put it up yet i'm dying to put this puppy up and yeah. one last thing before we leave here these boats come with a snap shackle okay this, we're this on the is, anchor bridle yeah this is on the bridle so these boats just come with a snap shackle like that that connects your bridle to your chain and so many people have a problem with uh, this bending under load and never being able to get it undone we Never had that problem on the Lucia, but when this boat arrived after doing its 3,000 nautical mile voyage from France to here, the girls only anchored a handful of times, that pin had already been bent and I physically had to cut it off. So I've gone with this design, so that's Dyneema, 10 mil. I just made a continuous Dyneema loop out of that and a soft shackle. That wraps around the chain a couple of times Again, I got this idea off Pete. He's been running the system now for a couple of years and has never had a problem with it. I haven't tried it out, but really looking forward to giving it a test. And it looks good too. <laughs> You're very proud of that, aren't you? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so, that's it. Couple so, minutes to go. We'll get back to filming in a minute. <laughs> Some priorities haven't changed much around here. <laughs> the football's still very important. Oh, no. Well, we'll get back to you in just a minute. And finish this movie. <sighs> Bugger. And so for the verdict, did we need a bigger boat? <laughs> Short answer. No. <laughs> no. Long answer. Look, maintenance is obviously a lot more. Cleaning is, this boat is ridiculously big to clean. The costs have gone up for mooring. Uh, it's going to be more difficult to find a space in a crowded anchorage. Mm. Is it more comfortable? Hell yeah. Overall, it's a more livable boat, but 
the reason that we're answering this question is because so many of you have written to us and said, what's going on, you're selling the Lucia. Was it not enough boat for you? And the simple answer is the Lucia 40 yep. was the absolute perfect size for us as a couple sailing here in the Med. So, so many of you are wondering why we've opted to move out of the 40 and into the 45. And we wonder ourselves sometimes. Yeah, still. <laughs> we wonder if we've done the right thing. Look, I think the future will tell us that we have. We're very happy with this boat and I think she'll sail well and she'll cross oceans more comfortably. But at the end of the day, we didn't need to. So why did we? We had a really good opportunity to get out of the Lucia after just three years. She was in beautiful condition and we sold it on a really good market. And buying this boat off the plan, we got a really good deal through our broker as well. So that's really the mm. only reason yeah. that we moved on to the 45. We certainly didn't need the extra space, but it's nice to have, yeah. so. And I personally think that if you're a cruising couple and you, you're just having visitors every so often, if you're tossing up between a 40 foot and a 45 foot or, or larger, and you're thinking, how big a boat do we need? you probably need to ask yourself, how fit are we? How competent are we in terms of sailing and managing the boat? Because there's absolutely no doubt that this boat's gonna take a lot more energy to manage than the Lucia. Yeah, don't buy more boat than you need. Definitely, and look, I can only imagine the stress levels that we would have had stepping straight onto straight this, boat. this boat. As novice sailors, I think the Lucia was more than enough boat for us to manage as novice sailors. So I, I actually think that the way we've gone about this is, was the right way for us, and we do feel ready to manage this boat, but it's still daunting. Yep. So just wrapping up, uh, a lot of you also uh, contacted us and asked us about what our sailing plans are for <laughs> this season. Unfortunately, we all know that COVID has played major interruptions around the globe. So our plans for this season will push off from here. We'll sail either north or south, depending on which way the wind's blowing, and we'll do more of the Turkish coast. It's such a beautiful country to explore. Oh, yeah. And look, there's actually lots that we haven't done here, so we're thankful for that. Yeah. As the season draws on, there's a little bit of rumour that Greece might open up to us. So if that's the case, we will definitely pop back into Greece. Our initial plan was to cross the Atlantic at the end of this year. Uh, we're not going to do that. Yeah, we just feel that now is not the time to be country hopping. We want to wait until the restrictions are much less onerous and we can just move from country to country with the same level of freedom that we used to enjoy. So Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know where we'll pop up next, but we'll be sure to uh, video it and bring it to you as soon as we can. Yeah. So. Thanks for your support, guys. You've all been absolutely amazing in your comments and everything about our new boat. We feel so lucky to have such a nice group of people on board. We really appreciate yeah, you. Yeah. Only a small subscriber base, but we have a loyal following. I think we've said before that we don't monetize this channel in any way, shape or form, but your comments, your thumbs up, and your subscriptions just motivate us. And yeah, it's just a, it's a love job and a hobby, but when people actually subscribe or make a comment or something like that, it just gives us the energy to keep going. Yeah, so on stay that note, tuned. Yeah. Cheers. Catch you in the next one. I see this life like a swinging vine. Swing my heart across the line. And my face is flashing signs. Seek it out and you shall find. Oh, but I'm not that old, young. But I'm not that bold. I don't think the world is so. Just doing what we're told.